I'm really enjoying my streps this winter. This little plant has grown from a cutting from a leaf. And it only started to grow maybe four months ago. It's already flowering, has one open, two buds coming, another bud down here. These streptocarpus are great little plants. This is one of my favorite. It's, it has nice striping in the petals. This little guy has four stems, half a dozen flowers and buds, and it'll flower 12 months of the year. So it's winter here and I'm growing these inside. And the one problem I do have is fungus gnats. And so in this video, I'm going to tell you what they are, how to get rid of them, and how to prevent them. If you're interested in growing streptocarpus, I have a whole set of videos on that, and I'll put a link at the end to those. Propagating and growing these things is really easy, provided you don't overwater. And overwatering also causes fungus gnats. Whenever you're trying to deal with a pest, I think it's really important to understand that pest. Become one with the pest. And fungus gnats are no different. So let's first have a look at the life cycle of a fungus gnat. Let's start with the adult. They live about a week, and during that time they can lay up to 100 eggs. The eggs take three to four days to hatch, and then they turn into a larva. And the larva is a small white grub has a black head and the body is almost transparent. In fact, if you have a close look, you can actually see the food has been eating inside of it. The larvae lives in the pot, in that soil, for about two weeks, and then it pupates. The pupate is like a cocoon, and it just stays in there, it doesn't eat anything, doesn't damage your plants at that stage. And it's in there for three to four days, and then it hatches out as a fly, and the cycle starts all over again. So the cycle of the fungus gnat takes about 30 days, but that does depend on temperature. It's a little warmer, it's a little faster. If you're in the basement, like I am with my plants, it's a little slower. We talk about fungus gnats, but in fact, fungus gnats refers to a whole number of different species of flies. They're all very similar. They all have a similar life cycle. And as gardeners, we'd have a hard time telling one from the other, so it's good enough to call them all fungus gnats. So why are fungus gnats a problem? They're called fungus gnats because they tend to eat the fungus on dead material. So there is fungus growing in your potted plants, and that's their preferred food, at least for some of the species. Some of the other species actually prefer to eat the roots of plants, and that's where the real damage comes in. A few fungus gnats are not going to do tremendous damage to your plant, but if the population gets out of control, they can do severe damage. So you do want to keep an eye on this problem. The second issue gardeners have with fungus gnats is the flies themselves. The flies don't do any harm. They don't eat your plants. They don't sting. They're just flying around. They're kind of a nuisance. In fact, as I picked up my little strap here, one of the flies went flying off. So it's something that homeowners don't want in their house. And so that's why that's a problem. And of course, if you have adults, they're going to go around laying eggs, which means you have a larvae and you have problems on your plants. So where do the fungus gnats come from? Well, they're kind of everywhere. And if you have house plants, sooner or later, you're going to have some fungus gnats in the house. You really can't keep them away from your plant. The best thing you can do is keep an eye out for them. And when you start seeing them, do something about it. But there are some cultural things you can do to keep the populations low. The larvae like to live in moist soil, and you rarely find them in dry soil. So one of the keys to controlling fungus gnats is to water less. And most homeowners overwater their plants anyway. So water your plants and then let them dry out. If the top half inch, inch of soil dries out between watering, you're much less likely to have fungus gnats. And if you do have them, you'll have a much lower population. The flies will only lay the eggs in wet soil. Now, the control of fungus gnats is a bit difficult, and I see a lot of comments online that tell me that people haven't taken the time to understand the cycle. So, for instance, they get these yellow sticky cards, which I'll talk about in a minute, and they put those up, and they collect flies, and then there's more flies, and they, they go online, and they say, well, it's not working. I keep getting more flies. Well, remember, the cycle is about 30 days. 
So when you start trapping flies, you have to trap them for at least 30 days before you'll get rid of them. And there's always some flies that don't get stuck to the yellow sticky cards. Think about how you're going to approach this because you really have two problems. On the one hand, you have larvae and on the other, you have fly. And most of the control methods either control one or the other. They don't control both. So you might want to use two different control methods if you want to get rid of them quicker. So let's have a look at some of these control methods that you can consider and figure out which ones are worth trying and which ones actually work. I've already mentioned the yellow sticky card. So these are some sort of a yellow paper or yellow plastic with a sticky material on it. Flies are attracted to the color yellow. So the flies come along, they go to the yellow card and they get stuck and die. So commercial yellow sticky cards work quite well for controlling the fly. Of course, the larvae aren't attracted to yellow. They don't come up and get stuck on these cards. So if you put up the cards, you have to leave them for at least a month, maybe a little longer before you'll get rid of these. And there's always a few that get away. So it's kind of an ongoing process, but you can get rid of most of the flies within a month. By the way, I'm going to put a link to all the products I mention in the description below, and that'll take you to an Amazon site where you can buy the product. A lot of people discuss making their own yellow cards. I mean, after all, what is it? A yellow piece of paper and something sticky on it. So they suggest you think things like Vaseline and honey, different kinds of glue, even motor oil has been recommended. I did a little survey on Facebook and asked people which of these DIY methods work. And the consensus was that none of them are very effective. The commercial products work because the material they use is stickier and holds the flies. Most of these other things I mentioned, like Vaseline, yeah, they're a little sticky, but they don't really hold the flies well. If you want to use yellow sticky cards, you're better off buying some. Now, they're available as regular index card size, and you can buy them as little flowers that you actually stick in the pots. They might look a little better if you've got those plants up in your living room. For a grow area under lights where you don't care so much, the cards probably work better because they have a larger surface area. Another product you can use is called BTI. BTI is a bacteria, and that bacteria is found naturally in all the soils outside. And it doesn't harm people, it doesn't harm animals, but it does produce a toxin that affects larvae. So if you take some BTI and feed it to the larvae, they stop eating and eventually die. It's very effective. The main use of BTI is actually for controlling mosquito. And so there's a product out there called Mosquito Dump. They're kind of donut shaped rings that you float on the water and they dissolve and slowly float through the water and the larvae eat that BTI and die. You can buy the mosquito dunks and crush them up and put the crushed material on your potted plant. But the same company also makes a new product called Mosquito Bits. What they've done is they've taken the stuff and crunched it up for you so it's already in smaller pieces. That's much more convenient for potted plants. Same product, they're both BTI. That material works once it's wet. You either put it in the water used for watering your plants, or you put it on top and then water your plants and get it into the water that's in the pot. This product is not living bacteria. It's just the toxin from the bacteria. And that's a very common myth I find on the internet. BTI works for about 30 days. So about once a month, you want to reapply that material. Now, of course, BTI does nothing to get rid of the flies. That's why you might want to use the BTI and the yellow sticky cards together to attack both the flies and the larvae. Another product that works very well for larvae are nematodes. And nematodes are small little worms that will attack the fungus gnat larvae. The reports I've seen of this indicate that the nematodes do work, but they're a little finicky to use. The nematodes have to be alive when you apply them. And that's a problem because to keep them alive, you have to keep them cool. Now, I haven't tried this, but apparently if you take the material, take some of the nematodes out, put a little water in there and get yourself a good magnifying glass, you can actually see the worm and they should be moving around. If they just lay there, they're dead. And a lot of the material that's sold has gotten too warm and those nematodes have died off. 
I looked up this product for fungus gnats and I found several on Amazon that now claim that they don't need to be refrigerated and they're stored dry. So you might want to give those a try. Another simple solution is to cover the surface of the pot with sand. It turns out that the fungus gnats are looking for for the fungus and they want to lay their eggs near the fungus so that the hatched eggs have something to eat and they like laying the eggs on moist soil they don't lay it on dry sand so by covering your pots with a bit of sand the top of the sand gets too dry and the flies won't lay their eggs in it so that does work but there's a problem with that solution if you look at the bottom of your pots they have holes in them and the flies are very small and they can easily go down and lay their eggs in the soil that they reach through those holes. So the sand sort of works, but to make it work really well, you kind of have to cover up the bottom of the pot so that the flies can't lay their eggs in the holes. Now, another solution I see online a lot is to take some cider vinegar or some wine and put it in a little dish and then put it near your plant and the flies will come along because they're attracted to this material sit on the liquid and drown now that doesn't work okay, that works very well for fruit flies it does not work for fungus gnats fungus gnats are not attracted to the vinegar or the wine that only works for fruit flies and that brings up an important point if you have things flying around the house and they're tiny little flies, it doesn't mean you have fungus gnats. You really want to have a close look at one of these and try and identify it. If you look closely at the fly and some pictures online, you can very clearly see the difference between fruit flies and fungus gnats. They look quite different. Their body shapes are different. Their eye shape is different. But one way you can tell the difference is by putting some wine in a dish. Fruit flies will be there right away because they like rotting fruit. Fungus gnats won't. Now there's one other fly that looks a lot like fungus gnats, and that's the drain fly. You tend to find it in the kitchen, and believe it or not, it does tend to live in the goop found in drains. Now drain flies might be attracted to those yellow sticky cards, but none of the other solutions I've talked about are going to work for drain flies. Now they're pretty distinct too. They look more like small moths than fly. So again, have a close look, figure out which insect you actually have, and then understand that insect, and then go looking for a solution. So how big of a problem are fungus gnats? Well, I have them most years when I start growing things under lights, but they're never a huge problem for me. I think the reason is that I keep my soil on the dry side. And so the fungus gnats don't do that well in my soil. Fungus itself, the mold, also likes wet soil. So I probably have less growing in my pots than other people who water a lot. So maybe the real solution to this is don't water so much and maybe accept a few flies once in a while. But at least now you know that if you do have an outbreak and you do want to take care of it, there are some solutions that work. Now, if you're online and ask other gardeners what they do and they tell you some other solutions, don't believe them. People talk about other ways of getting rid of these flies. Those methods don't work. If you're interested in growing things from seeds, I have a whole course on YouTube for doing that. And I'll put a link to all those videos in the top right hand corner. Have fun with your plants in the wintertime and don't worry about the pests.